Hey there, it's Bree, and this is my June wrap up slash recent reads. So I just want you guys to know that this is the second time I'm filming this because the first time I forgot to plug my mic in. I feel like that's the story of my life. I consistently forget to plug my mic in. Sometimes I remember. Other times like this, I get halfway through the video and I, I remember in the middle. This is kind of a mashup of like a recent reads and a wrap up video because I haven't done a recent reads video in a while, mostly because I've like, my reading was a little bit slow this month. I didn't read quite as much books as I usually read in the month of June. And also I did a couple of vlogs and I talked in depth about some of the books in those vlogs. So a recent reads didn't really make sense. And I kind of figured over the past couple of weeks, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to talk about these books a little bit more in depth in my wrap up video, but then the books that I've already talked about in recent videos, I will link those videos down below and I won't talk about them as much in this video in hopes that this video won't be 8 million hours long. But this will be like kind of a mashup of both a wrap up and a recent read. So I'll go over stats and everything, but then where I normally wouldn't talk in depth about the books, I will talk a little bit more in depth about the books that I haven't talked to you about previously, if that makes sense. The other thing that's gonna be different is normally in my wrap up videos, I rank the books, like I talk about the books in the order that I liked them. So I usually will start with my least favorite and go to my favorite, but this time I forgot to put them in order, so we're just gonna talk about them in the order that I read them. Let's start off with my stats. So I ended up reading 24 books in the month of June. I know I said that I didn't read a lot in June and I slowed down a little bit, and that's, that. honestly, 24 isn't as much as I normally read, but it's still like decent. Like I honestly thought I had only read like 10, 15 books in June, but apparently I read more. I'm currently reading one book. I am buddy reading I Married a Lizard Man, and it's been an absolute joy to read. This is a book that Mariana Zapata actually talked about, and it made me want to pick it up. It reminds me a lot of Radiance, and I'm loving it. I think I'm on chapter 10 right now. I am. I reread one book. I didn't do any buddy reads, readathons, arcs, and I ended up reading eight books of the 10 books that were on my June TBR, which is really good. So as far as the star rating breakdown, I didn't have any one stars. That's pretty typical. I usually, if something's gonna be a one star, usually we'll DNF it. I had one two star. I had four three stars, eight four stars, and 11 five stars. Genre breakdown. For new adult, I read four new adult books. I read 21 adult books. I did not read any YA books this month. I ended up reading 21 contemporary books. That's pretty typical for me. I much prefer contemporary. I read one paranormal, one historical. I didn't read any sci-fi or fantasy. I read two nonfiction books, and those two nonfiction books obviously were non-romances. I did not read any graphic novels or mangas. For format, again, very typical. I read 20 audiobooks. For ebooks, didn't read any physical books. Representation, marginalized voices, so that's by POC, disability rep, LGBTQIA+, neurodiverse. Books that had characters with marginalized voices, I read seven of them, and then books with authors with marginalized voices, I read six. So the very first book that I read in June, which is hilarious, I actually read it on my vacation, so I talk about it in my vacation reading blog, is 15 Inches by Madison Fay. This book is pretty much exactly what you can expect from it. I got exactly what I expected out of it. It's basically this woman who go, has this Pilates instructor who's a guy and she ends up walking in on him when he's in the shower and he's very big and then it's super seamy, super short. It was fine, I gave it three stars. And then I picked up A Kiss for a Kiss by Helena Hunting. Again, I talked about this one in my vacation reading vlog. I ended up giving this four stars. It's my least favorite in the series, but I didn't dislike it. It just was my least favorite because the rest of the books I really, really like. This one, I guess, is like a mature romance. They're in their 40s. And what's interesting is it's a romance between the dad of the heroine in the previous book and the mom of the hero in the previous book. So that's what makes it interesting. And I liked the dad like immediately in the, the previous book. So I really liked him and I was excited about his book. The only problem was, was I felt like it jumped into the middle of the relationship and you didn't get to see it build as much as I would have liked. That was the only thing. Also, this whole series, rev series revolves around this hockey team and he is the manager of the hockey team. And then I read Love Under Quarantine by Kylie Scott. I talked about this in my recent reads video. This is a quarantine romance, it talks about coronavirus. I gave this three stars. I liked the beginning of it and then it kind of lost me toward the end. This next book I talk about in my recent reads as well, it's Sleepless Over You by Sydney Smith. It's a Sleepless in Seattle retelling, a male male romance, Sleepless in Seattle retelling. It's available on Audible Plus if you're interested. And then I picked up Haven, it's Beards and Bondage, book number one by Rebecca Weatherspoon. 
Finally picked up another Rebecca Weatherspoon. I loved Zenny, so I was excited to read this one. It was on my TBR and it was on Hoopla, so I listened to the audiobook. I ended up giving it five stars. I loved it. it. had so many things that I love in it. it. has a loner, mountain man hero, has caretaking. There's great things in it. Like it had bodyguard vibes in it because in the very beginning, the hero meets the heroine because he's like up in his mountain loner little house cabin thing. And he's like in the middle of the woods and all of a sudden he hears this woman screaming, which is very unusual because there's no one usually around him. Sorry, my dog is whining if you can hear him. So there's no one usually around him, but she he hears this woman screaming. So he like walks outside and this woman who's like bloody and battered comes running out of the woods and she's like, someone's chasing me. And then the dude that's chasing her comes out and then the hero ends up killing him. So that's how they meet. And it ends up being really, really good. There is like, it's called Beards and Bondage. So there is a BDSM element in it. I felt like that was kind of secondary. Like I almost felt like the book would have been fine without it, but it didn't bother me that it was in it. So I feel like if you aren't used to BDSM or you don't normally like BDSM, you might want to give this one a try because it's like BDSM light. Oh, I do want to mention, especially before I talk about this book, normally I list the trigger warnings in the description box when I do my recent reads. And I will be listing trigger warnings in the description box this time, but because I was feeling kind of slumpy this month, I did kind of a terrible job about keeping notes while I was reading of the trigger warnings. So it wasn't until I was writing these reviews and prepping for this video that I had to kind of remember what they were. So I might have missed some, so they're not going to be as thorough as I usually do. It's just, it's honestly, it's really hard work keeping track of trigger warnings. I don't know how much longer I can keep up doing it. I just, I really wish that authors would do it themselves, but here we are. Some authors do though, and actually Nikki Sloan does, and she is the next person that I'm going to talk about because they then picked up Sorted by Nikki Sloan. This one I talked about in my recent reads video. I have the fan on and like my hair is going crazy. Okay. A million and a half trigger warnings for this one. The number one is that the hero rapes the heroine in the very beginning of it. And that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the book. It's a dark romance. She she normally writes like steamy and taboo romances, but not normally dark romances. And this was kind of her first like foray into it. And she has like triggers listed in the front of this book. And she has like a whole letter to the reader and everything in the beginning. So that was really nice. I talk more about this in my recent reads video, but basically... <sighs> I wasn't super invested in the relationship because I never really did forgive the hero. I don't think he groveled enough. I don't know if anyone could grovel enough. I don't think you can come back from that. But I enjoyed the story nonetheless, so I gave it four stars. I know, like I said, I talk more about it in my recent reads, so you can check that out. I also read Sweet Talk, which is Love Lines number two by Cara Bastone. This is available on Audible Plus, and I ended up giving this one five stars. I talk more about it in my recent reads video. This one was super flippin' cute. Um, if you liked Call Me Maybe, you will love this one too. Do I like this one better? I don't know if I like this one better. I think I like it about the same, but I ended up really, really liking it. It's a wrong text romance, if that makes sense. So I think it was the hero that texted, yeah, the hero texts the heroine mistakenly, but then they start talking and everything and they know each other, but she won't reveal who she is. So it ends up being a super cute romance, it's super short though. So then after I read that, I ended up picking up The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. I talk about this in my recent reads video as well. This is a nonfiction book about the Radium Girls. It's basically these young women, I think they started from the age of 14, who worked for this clock face company and they painted the clock faces with radium, which is super, super poisonous and terrible for you. And they ended up getting poisoned and it was just like their journey of trying to get what they were owed from these companies and how they were like physically falling apart from what happened to them. It's, it was intense and it's absolutely not for everybody, but it was very, very interesting. So I gave that one five stars. And then I ended up picking up Thicker Than Water by Dylan Allen. This is a special edition cover that is absolutely beautiful. Just like this book. This book was really, really good. The heroine of this book is an author. She's optioning her book to become a movie. And then the hero is the one who I think he's like a producer and he wants to make her book into a movie because it really touched him. It's kind of like the book is kind of telling her story a little bit. She's an immigrant. So she's kind of telling her story and it talks a lot about immigration, immigration laws. And so it has that whole thing in it. I feel like I learned a lot in this book along with enjoying the romance. I will say that one of the things that kind of got on my nerves is that the antagonist was a little too one dimensional. Like he was just, he was just a jerk and evil for evil's sake. Like he didn't feel like well fleshed out and he was just doing awful, awful things with and it's for seemingly no good reason. Like I didn't understand why he was doing it. And usually if someone is doing something that awful, I like to know their motives behind it and feel like 
I understood why they were doing it. And so that kind of got my nerves. I wasn't super invested in the romance, but I enjoyed this book overall. So I gave it four stars. Okay, and then I picked up what might be one of my favorite reads of the month. And that is the VIP series, which is Idle, Managed, and Fall. I picked up all three of these books. I talk more in depth about them in my reading blog. And I freaking love this. This is a rockstar series and it's so freaking good. Some of the best meet cutes in the entire world happen in all of them. So in this one, the hero drunkenly gets in a motorcycle accident into the heroine's yard, like breaks her gate and everything. And that's how they meet. So it's enemies to lovers romance. He is a rock star. She's a musician and he ends up being her neighbor. And then this one, which was my favorite one, my favorite, favorite one, this one, the hero and the heroine meet on, air, on an airplane. She's on her way to an interview and she's in first class and she ends up sitting next to him, but he thinks that he bought the seat next to him. So he was like, why is this woman sitting here? So they get off to a rocky start, but he also has anxiety and she kind of calms him down on the plane and it's super, super sweet and I loved it. And then it's definitely a Grumpy Sunshine, so well done, one of my favorite Grumpy Sunshines. And then this one, Fall, this one, they meet in a grocery store. The hero is like following the heroine around while she's shopping and they keep getting the same things and she thinks that he's being a creeper, but really they're just getting the same things and he's not really following her around. But then they both reach for the same thing, the last of something, and he ends up getting it before her. So she kisses him to distract him and take it and then she runs away and he's like a lead singer, rock star. So he's not used to girls running, kissing him and running away. So he's very intrigued by her and then she ends up house sitting for his neighbor so they end up like running into each other and like keep running into each other after that so good this is such a great series even if you don't like rockstar romances give this one a try and then i picked up what is probably my favorite read from june and that is real by kennedy ryan i have a whole very very in-depth reading vlog where i actually talk about those previous books but i mostly talk about this book in that reading vlog and i have timestamps in that reading vlog because it's really long i have timestamps for when i'm talking about this but i also go into my experience with ms and i also have a q a in that vlog so you can check that out i'll link it down below this one is a romance between a Broadway singer and a director and so she it's her debut movie and he like sees her Broadway show thinks that she's perfect for the part ends up having her like work on this movie with him there is chronic illness representation there's a lot there's strong family drama and things that happen in it the romance is amazing like I can't adequately explain this book and what this meant to me in a short amount of time so I definitely recommend checking out that reading vlog also, I will link down below my discussion that I had with Tori about this book. And we talk mostly about our experiences with chronic illness and what it meant to us to see it represented in this book. Then I ended up reading A Lady of Roxgrave Manor. It's Tempting Monsters book number one by Catherine Moon. This one I totally read because of Jen. She had messaged me and told me about it. And she was like, it's a monster reverse harem. And I was like, done and done. So I read it. This one is like, takes place in like historical times, which I normally don't like. And to be completely honest, I think I would have liked it better if it was contemporary, but I didn't hate that it was historical. Um, so basically, like I said, yeah, it's a monster reverse harem. It's almost like a brothel, but she gets to choose the men and the men aren't men. They're actually monsters. And she gets to have like clients or whatever. And they're like high paying clients. She would have room and board and all of that stuff. So it ends up being a really great situation for her because she did work for this household like she was a maid in this household, but then the household like ends up getting sold or something and she would have lost her job. So instead she takes this, she kind of has this insatiable sex drive. So it ends up being like a really perfect situation for her. So, so, so steamy and so good. It's so good. And then I ended up picking up Just a Heartbeat Away, Forever Yours by Cara Bastone. I had mentioned in a previous video that I really want to read more Cara Bastone and then Zay from Witty Reads ended up gifting me this book, oh, by the way, um, the VIP series, SD gifted that to me, which was absolutely sweet of her and I loved it. But anyway, this book was really good. It's a widower, single father romance between him and then his son's teacher. And it actually was really, really sweet. I felt like, and this could have totally just been because I was a little bit slumpy, but I felt a little bit disconnected from the romance toward the middle and toward the end of this book. So I ended up giving it four stars, but overall I ended up really liking the book. And then after that, I picked up another book that was on my TV and it was Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. This is a bodyguard romance, but it's also a best friend's little sister romance. And so there's a forbidden element in it. There's um, forced togetherness in it. And what I loved about this book especially, and what I usually like about bodyguard romances is when it's the bodyguard who is hesitant to be with the girl that he's guarding for whatever reason. And in this case, it's because 
it's his best friend's little sister, but then the heroine is a little bit pushy about it. And that was the dynamic in this book. It's super, super steamy, but it's also really short. I think my only complaint about it is that I wish it was longer. Like I feel like this would have been a really good fleshed out full novel. So I end up giving it four stars. But I loved it. I mean, it's Talia Hibber, and she always has great steamy scenes. And then I picked up Welcome to Summerland. It's Summerland book number one by Catherine Moon. This is a novella. It's also, is this reverse? I can't decide if this is reverse harem or polyamorous because it was a novella and the ending was a little bit abrupt. I think it almost ends on like a cliffhanger kind of, but it's a small town romance as well. It was interesting, but... I feel like I was, I never really got into it. And again, I don't know if it's just because I, it was my state of mind and I was slumpy or if it's because the book was ended so abruptly and was so short. I know like the rest of the series is out, so I could go on in it, but I don't really have the drive to. Maybe I will, but basically it's small town romance. The heroine was about to get married and then her fiance decided just on a whim that he didn't want to marry her. So she ends up going on their honeymoon anyway without him to this small town called Summerland. And then she ends up hooking up with the with three different guys. And it's interesting because it's like three totally different guys. You have like the loner hero, you have like the like mechanic type guy, and then you also have like a coffee shop owner. So you have like every type of small town romance type hero that there is, and she hooks up with all of them. This is the same author who wrote the um the Tempting Monster series, the Lady of Rock Rooksgrave Manor. So it's the same author. So I think that's kind of what she does is usually reverse harem. So I was excited about this one, but I was a little bit let down by it too. So I gave it three stars. And then it was my reread. And if you've been watching my videos for the past couple of months, you may have noticed that I've been reading a lot of Helena Hunting books. And so the only books that I hadn't read by her were part of her Clipped Wings series. And that's because I had read the first book in the series and then I never moved on in it because I didn't love it. I think I gave it three stars the first time I read it. So I was like, you know what? I know there's a crossover book, at least one, maybe two, maybe more for a Pucked series. And I was like, I think I would like this series. I'm gonna give it another chance. I'm gonna start with the first book and go on. So I ended up reading Clipped Wings and which is the first book it's a tattoo like the hero is a tattoo shop owner or at least he's a tattoo artist and then the heroine is kind of running from her past running from something tragic that happened to her and she works i think across the street i think it's at a library or something here's the thing i actually disliked it more this time than i did the first time i read it and i ended up changing my rating to two stars because I super didn't like it. And it's mostly because it was so angsty. It had like the new adult kind of angsty. Like it, I know it, it's meant to be super emotional, but the drama fell over the top. Again, you have another antagonist who's over the top where you don't understand why he's doing what he's doing. I didn't understand what the heroine was doing. The heroine could have easily gotten rid of the antagonist, like gotten him off her back if she would have just done this one thing that I feel like she was making a big deal out of, but like it could have easily been solved. And I was just so dramatic, like way too dramatic. And I was just rolling my eyes the entire time. And I don't think I'm going to move on in the series, or at least I don't think I'm going to read the second book because the second book continues to follow this couple. And I don't care. I don't care about them. <laughs> so I probably, if I do move on in the series, I'm not going to read the second book. I probably will move on to when it's about another couple. And hopefully I'll be able to make it until I get to the pucked crossover. So yeah, I super didn't like it. Least favorite book that I read this month. And then I ended up reading the first three books in the Brentwood Boys series. <laughs> This is another series that I read completely out of order and I didn't know. I feel like because I read the first book, which was, I can't remember which book it was, but I read two of the books from the series, which was completely out of order. I read them on Hoopla and it didn't mention that it was part of a series, so I read them out of order, but I read the first three books finally. I ended up reading The Locker Room by Megan Quinn. And I gave this one four stars. I liked this one. It was really good. It was fine. It's good. It was a fun, light, fluffy rom-com. I mean, that's what you can kind of expect from Megan Quinn. It's a baseball sports romance, new adult. And it was good. I'm, the hero is like the Southern guy. He's a sweet guy. He charms everybody except for the heroine. I think I was really, really enjoying this. And then there ends up being like an eight year time jump. Like something happens and that kind of breaks them up and stops their romance from developing. And then there's eight years and then they get together again, which I know throws a lot of people off, but I'm going to be completely honest. I actually liked the comeback, like after those eight years happen and when they see each other again for the first time, I liked that more than any other part in the book. So I don't know, like I was feeling kind of meh about it and then it got to that part and I was like super invested. 
So I don't know. So I ended up giving it four stars because I had to take a star away because I was a little bit bored in the middle. And then I finally read The Dugout, which is the second book in that series. And I feel like this is the one that a lot of people were telling me were their favorites and they thought that it would be my favorite too. To be completely honest, I really like this one. I gave it five stars, but it's not my favorite. Um, it has a really interesting premise though. The heroine is a tomboy, which I feel like you don't see a lot. And she also knows a ton about baseball because she grew up in a baseball family. Like her brother's a professional baseball player. Her dad loves baseball. And then she has two other brothers who work like baseball adjacent. And she's really, really good at like the technical side of baseball. And the hero, he ends up getting injured just when he's about to be drafted. So he has to end up staying another year. Like he wasn't going to stay his senior year and he ends up having to stay his senior year because he gets injured. And then it messes up his swing. And she's like the only one who can detect what's wrong with his swing. And so she ends up helping him with it. And I really liked that, that dynamic. She was very tomboyish, which I liked, but it's not really relatable to me because I have I was a tomboy when I was younger, but now I'm much more of like a girly girl. But she's a tomboy, so it's funny because it kind of throws him off a little bit. He can't tell if he's attra if she's attracted to him or not because of that, which I thought was really cute. But I almost would have preferred, and this is 100% just a me thing, but I would have preferred if she was much more of a girly girl, but still really, really good at that technical side of baseball and just completely flipped the stereotype on its head. I would have actually liked that a little bit better. But it did lend itself to the story because her being a tomboy threw him off and her being kind of inexperienced and everything threw him off a little bit. So it was really good. I really liked that one. Not my favorite. One of my favorites in the series and this, this one and the change up so far are my favorites. The Lineup, which is the third book in the series. This one, again, has another one of the baseball players, but the heroine I freaking loved. And I feel like she's probably a heroine that not a lot of people will like because she's very prickly. She is a businesswoman. She's a badass boss bitch. And I loved that about her. Like she worked hard to get where she was, even though she comes from a very privileged family. Like her parents own this super like successful company and she works for it at a very high level. And she ends up accidentally donating $10,000 to the hero's charity, which wins her a date with him, but it was an accident. So when he comes to like have the date with her or whatever, she's like, yeah, no, I'm, we're not doing this. But what I loved was their dynamic because he is very like, I don't know if feminine's the right word, but very in touch with his feminine side. He doesn't have like that toxic masculinity at all. Like he will kiss his male friends and like hug them. He's affectionate. He weeps. He says he weeps. Like that's the actual word he uses. So he cries a lot. He's in touch with his emotions. But in the bedroom, he turns into a total alpha, which is really, really cool. I really like that dynamic, but I like the dynamic of him just being... Because you know it's Megan Quinn, so she can be over the top with the comedy in her books. And he was a little bit over the top sometimes, but I loved it because he was so charming and he balanced her so well. And I just, oh, it was so adorable. And all of these can be read by standalones, by the way, because I read them as standalones. So you totally could. So then after that, I picked up All Things Burned by Jodie Slaughter. This was on my TBR. This is a book that I had been eyeing for a long time because it's a hitman romance and it's a dark romance, and it's written by a black author who I hadn't read before. And I had a couple of friends who read it recently, and they really liked it. And I ended up really liking it too. I ended up giving it four stars though, because it was a little bit convenient how things worked out. Like things worked out a little too well. I feel like, especially when you're dealing with like murder and crime and everything, I feel like things worked out in the favor of the couple a little bit too easily, if that makes sense, but it ended up being really good. And then I picked up Lotus Effect by Trisha Wolf. I actually picked this up because I had gotten the audiobook at a discount because Audible had a big sale during Prime Day. I haven't read a Trisha Wolf book in a while and I felt like it was time. This is not a romance though. There is a very strong romance in it, but it's not a romance. It's more considered a thriller. I think it's a psychological thriller which is a genre I don't read much of, but I feel like I need to. When I talk about how much I liked this book, if you read a lot of thrillers, you may not be as swept up in it or as caught off guard by it as I was. Like the twists and everything you may get if you read a lot of thrillers, but because I don't read a lot of thrillers, to me, I thought it was really, really interesting. And I've been like, one of the podcasts I've been listening to is True Crime. So this felt very much true crimey because the heroine is a true crime writer. And the reason why she's a true crime writer is because because someone attempted to murder her and she doesn't know who it was because she can't remember her memory is wiped out. Basically, the story is her trying to catch her murderer because she actually, she died for a short amount of time, but then was brought back. 
So it's her trying to hunt down her murderer, but also telling the stories of other women and figuring them out for them. Like she works with the FBI and the romance is actually between her and an FBI agent who has been helping her on her case for a really long time. But oh my gosh, it's so interesting. And it has just the amazing Trisha Wolf writing. It has such a strong, steamy romance within it. And it was just really, really good. I felt like the twist caught me by surprise, but again... I don't read a lot of thrillers, so it doesn't take much. <laughs> and then I read Man Enough by Justin Baldoni. So actually that means I read two nonfiction books and maybe three or four non-romance books. Anyway, I picked up Man, em Man Enough by Justin Baldoni. So if you don't know who Justin Baldoni is, he is one of my favorite human beings, just like in general. He was on Jane the Virgin. That's how he kind of got famous. How I actually discovered him was through his TED Talk. He did this TED Talk called Man Enough, and he's talking about toxic masculinity and what it means to be man enough, what society thinks being man enough is and that versus what he thinks being man enough is. And this book is kind of, he took that TED talk and just went into much greater detail, telling more of his story, more of what he learned. And it's so important to listen to. He also has a podcast that I've been listening to recently where he talks about, he talks with other men and interviews them and they talk about masculinity, what it means to them. They talk about feminism and everything. He's just such an amazing person. He has also done a whole documentary series called My Last Days where he interview he like follows and interviews people with terminal illnesses. He also directed Five Feet Apart, which actually was inspired by one of the people he interviewed who had CF. He interviewed her and it's kind of like the main character was based on her. And I feel like I learned so much about CF. I knew nothing about it, but I learned so much both from that interview with her, but also from, from the movie. I think he's also going to be directing that Colleen Hoover book, which is It Ends With Us. He's the perfect person to be involved in that. This book was not written for me. This book is written for a man, and I wish I could put it in every single man's hand that I know. It wasn't written for me, but I learned from it. I learned so much from it. And to be completely honest, JT and I have had such great discussions because I read this book. He's going to be reading this book too, but he also has been listening to some of his like roundtable, Justin Baldoni's roundtable discussions that he's had and the podcast and everything, but he'll be reading this book next. It's been so great talking to him about toxic masculinity because there's so much that is so ingrained in men that they don't even realize it. And it, you know, addresses things like locker room talk and all of them, you know, are told that they're not allowed to be emotional, that that's too feminine. And they're told that boys will be boys and all of that toxic stuff. And he's just unraveling all of that. And it's having such a great trickle down effect. And I wish that every man would pick up this book and read it. It was so good. Obviously I gave it five stars. So that was a great book to end on in June. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books, which books of these sound interesting to you. If you want to read them, let me know in the comments below. We'll chat over there. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading. 